Hey, joining us in this discussion about the markets, David Bonson, David Dietz is with us, Susan Lee, Kate Parts is with us as well. David Bonson, uh, you, you first. Um, what do you make of the primary drivers of this market right now, this overall market resolve that we're witnessing? Sometimes I think people uh, don't want to admit that the biggest thing that pushed the market up was how low it had gone. It was oversold. It was, on a, on a, I'm talking purely as a fundamentalist, no technical here. It was just a sentiment-driven collapse in December, total buyer's strike. And then when normalcy came back in, you got after Christmas. Fact of the matter is you had stuff at valuations that were totally buyable. Right. You look at the energy sector, which is our biggest weighting, leading the pack so far 2019 the primary reason, there's been no big fundamental news. Oil's ticked up a bit. It's not about the commodity price. The fact of the matter is that they were way oversold. It's allowed buyers to come back in and start the year off right. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. I, I came back uh, from vacation right after Christmas, and I told the uh, people on my show, I thought that Christmas Eve session, it reminded me of Black Monday, October 19th, 1987. It wasn't a harbinger of a recession. It was a series of mistakes, including uh, the Secretary of Treasury <laughs> at the time, Making uh, un, un, you know m remarks that didn't help, sure. like Mnuchin having a meeting with all the banks. It felt like there was just an abundance of fear that had nothing to do with fundamentals. It was underscored by the fact that typically December is your strongest month of the year. Um, and, you know, the period right in the Christmas week is very strong. Uh, since then, there's been a remarkable rebound. Goldman Sachs up 33 percent since then. Netflix up almost 50 percent. And for me, it's basically policymakers blinked. All of a sudden, we're now getting patience out of the Federal Reserve in terms of what Jerome Powell is saying. And now we're also looking at carrots as well as sticks in terms of trade negotiations with China. So I think that's all positive. And I think a normalization and acceptance that, yes, earnings are lower for 2019, especially compared to stellar 2018. So the realization of a mid to high single digit increase in profits for this year, not bad still in a growing environment. And, but the key of what you said, the earnings are not lower. The earnings growth rate is lower. Growth, I said and, that and, very and, specifically. Yeah, and so what I'm getting, I, what I really think people need to understand is that the earnings are so solid, like you said, yeah. and still growing. Um, I think that I read a big report this morning on revisions downward in earnings, it was entirely XUS. Right. It was, it was Japan, they're having downward revisions, Europe. We're still in a positive environment. Remember the reaction to the ISM services oh, yeah. uh, index yeah. that was the worst growth rate since 2008? Yeah. We're still growing. Still it was positive. a 54-point reading. Let, let me take it further. Where it was, though. If you, talk, you just brought up ISM manufacturing activity is actually weakening. Uh, smaller business uh, We confidence. still growing above still, 50. I know, yeah. I know. So, yes, you have a strength in the S&P right now. Russell doing well. The greatest start we've seen since 1987, actually. However, there are some bellwethers, I guess you could say, that is concerning. The fact that confidence level is starting to shrink, well, and the and debt level for all well, of let this me, let, me, let me add another voice, uh, not mine, but the CEO of uh, CSX, uh, because mm. if there's a company that understands what's going on in this country, it'd be railroad. a railroad company, right? Over the last couple of months, everybody was talking about trade, tariffs, interest rates, what's going on with Brexit, government turbulence, all of these things must have some impact on the way you're running your business. But we go back to the same place we were a few months ago. Everybody, us and our customers, are still very optimistic about business. 2019, buying back $5 billion of their own stock. I mean, isn't that what it really comes down to? There's a lot of hysteria, and it's always focused on the worst possible outcome, and that's just not happening. Hey, well, I love how Bank of America bought its stock back at 26. Goldman Sachs is also buying stock back. But to take the implications of what the panel is saying here, we're going to have stronger earnings, and now I think interest rates are at bay. I see no reason why we can't test last September's highs, which well, is another 10% from here. Especially, you made the comment that the Fed blinked, and, and that's the charitable version of what it looks like he's doing. If they, if they, the Fed future. It's cable. Give right. us a non-charitable version. It's a white flag of surrender. <laughs> yeah. But he, but what he has done relative to where he was in October, when he said we're not even close to neutral, to now have the Fed funds futures market telling you no rate hikes all year. If that fifty billion a month of balance sheet roll off comes down to ten or twenty, that's a full blown capitulation. And by the way, that's still a possibility. Let's Very talk much. about big news this morning. Tesla, they, they're cutting jobs. The Journal has a report out. Uh, the job cuts uh, to help cut the price of the Model 3. What do you think about this move? Uh, the, the price cuts, <laughs> cutting the price of the car. 
Uh, well, uh, we don't Tesla. own Tesla. We wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. I talk all the time with Stuart about my uh, opposition to these money-losing ventures. Here's what I will say. Um, <laughs> they can be a profit, for- by the way, the third quarter surprise profit, which Elon Musk in that memo said it was probably the most uh, the probably most important profit in the 15-year history of Tesla. His and that's why he only has two of them. Workforce. And, uh, yeah, and, and it's, a funny, de- it's a funny definition of profit sure, that ends sure. up with $200 billion less than they had before. But the fact of the matter was, is that um, this job cut thing, I feel, for the people who have lost their jobs and so forth, but they need to do whatever they can to cut cost because from a cash flow standpoint, right now they've burned through equity capital. They've now started they're in the high yield market. It's a funding issue, and at some point something's got to give. The only thing is that this discussion is not about fundamentals, and they've been actually a little bit more efficient when it comes to labor. They said that they cut uh, 30% of labor hours when it comes to making these Model 3s. So there's some strength right now. Maybe it was just premature to sell off this much, uh, these Model 3s still have a lot of potential. And I think yeah, like, I, the price that, thing, I think, is an issue because they did promise that base model of $35,000, which they never put out. And you don't want to lower the okay, price. Okay, so, well, you know, we know, we know Elon Musk in the 60 Minutes interview said that they were virtually in single-digit weeks of survival. This is a cash burn story. They're trying to cut, yeah. reduce their workforce. You have a convertible to still pay in March that you need to strike price at uh, 359 Netflix so is that's a cash a billion burn story. Dollars. Hey, a lot um, of cash let, burn. Let me, let me go back uh, because I'm thinking about what you said. Okay, so we were oversold and then we made a bounce. Technicians usually talk about that being a retracement. So we've made a 50% retracement. When does the natural bounce of being oversold become something else? Because we're on a cusp now, David, of going higher into a place that over over uh, you know go, overcompensates for the oversoldness and speaks to something else I think and and it's dangerous to ask a non technician what a technician might think about this no but just overall because you yeah, said fundamentally well, but here's we were the thing. oversold uh, when fundamentally, we fundamentally become fundamentally, oversold yeah then this is th- this is to answer what you're getting at it's a great question fundamentally we may still be very undersold it, uh, oversold if a trade war situation is is worked out, and if indeed they're not going to extract so much liquidity out of the corporate right, economy, right. the credit markets have to constrict. That's the issue. High yield bond spreads are going to tell you the story. I think we got as wide as about five seventy five. We're now down about four fifty. So that's telling you that right now no there's issue plenty of in December to that meant nothing to you guys. But, but right? the bounce back can also cause a change in fundamentals. Look for Fed speak going forward. All of a sudden they start talking. Well, we do have to be vigilant about inflation. Look Look for, you know, corporate chieftains like, for example, Netflix are up 100 but, points. But, but, but the market can handle that. Can't the market handle the Fed raising rates if the data justifies it rather than saying we're an automatic pilot? We don't care. Absolutely. But they could handle a lot better a thousand points ago. And so we are. And they're still no bets question. on the market. They might cut interest rates, by the way. Let's if they're going to hold steady, they're going to cut. Let's talk about another stock that's sort of unique onto itself, but influ- influential with the market. Netflix uh, just really growing gangbusters around the world. Uh, the the their, their subscriber number actually beat uh, Wall Street's estimates and their guidance beat, but the stock a little wobbly. Again, considering it's up 50% in three weeks, maybe down 2% ain't so bad. I, I looked at their report today. I thought it was fabulous. Plus, when you combine that with their pricing power, so it goes from 11 to 13, that's still less than most people pay just to see a single movie. Uh, so, so uh, go ahead. Are you concerned about the cash burn, $3 billion? And then you have the U.S. subscriber rate that's not as big in the U.S., which I think contributed to some of that sell-off. So that's a great point, and that's one of the problems for the future. They need fresh content, and fresh content is not cheap. And, of course, mm-hmm. everyone in the world is, is getting into the streaming business. So you've got Disney, for example. Amazon's creating content. So there's certainly headwinds going forward, which is why you need to be cautious for that value. And his comment about those headwinds, the fact that they're more, Fortnite. They, Fortnite is a bigger competitor than Hulu, HBO, the only comfort a Netflix investor should take is that there's no way he really meant that because it's absurd. Well, there's real never- content <laughs> competition that is a threat to future margins. They know it. They're, they're prepared for it. Verizon, I'm, Comcast. But, remember when he oh, said it, it was sleep? He said that sleep was the biggest competition. <laughs> well, <laughs> the bottom line though is Blinky. keep binge watching is a is a phenomenon. It's a, you know it's, it's a global now, phenomenon. Right? And, well, it's and, free. And, and, and it doesn't keep, make them any more revenue. It's so, it's so much cheaper to binge watch Netflix than to go out to the movies a exactly. few times a month. Exactly, which so, is a great point. They still. Have I mean, a, they do have a distinct first mover advantage. They do have sure, a ton of right. content, and it's it's tough. I mean, this is a stock I wouldn't bet against. I would not go I short not this stock. But, but the, the first advantage at 140 times earnings. I, 
No, thank you. Disney yeah. is a big competitor, though. Think of all the movies they have. I think that that will be their biggest threat. Well, well, look, Netflix has pricing power. They have a big distribution model, and that's the point, right? Get mass uh, distribution to increase your ad value. All right. Well, we'll, we'll see. That uh, that debate has gone on for a long time, and i got to tell you, the stock has made it one hell of a move. Uh, I, I wish I held on to it from a 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Even wow. at 100 yes. bucks. All right. Thank you, folks, uh, very much.